causing it. Um, it. When you when you play a side character, do you take it lighter than if you're living with the character longer, um, or or do you take it just as seriously as any other role? Yeah, I mean, I, for me, I take it just as seriously as I would any other role. I, even when we go in and we do bits, and they're like, here's like one or two lines. This person is. It's super fun to get to do a Wallace session where you go in and you do 10, 15 characters. Because then you got to figure out how to make them different. And then you have the challenge, or not the challenge. I like to create like a big soap opera long backstory, just joking around with the director because we can. And I'll be like, oh, this girl with the red bow, she's clearly struggling after her boyfriend broke up with her. And that's why she's waiting in this long line. It makes the session really fun. And also, we got into this business so that we could create characters in whatever medium we could. So, for me, it feels like I'm depriving myself if I go, just say these ten lines, you don't need to know what's happening in the scene. Sure. I want to create the character, that's what I got into it for. I want to invest my time, I want to get to play, and I feel like any time we get the opportunity to get, in, uh, it, to get into the booth or to get on set or get on stage, there's another actor who didn't get that opportunity. And for me to just be like, just say your five lines is not fair for the person sitting at home being like, oh my god, if I could just get a session, if I could just work with a director, it would change my oh, life. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to do that to another actor because I've been that other actor and I know how hard it is. So I want to make every moment count. I want to enjoy every moment because otherwise it's a waste for the director, for the show, for you guys watching it, and for me. Yeah. Ditto. Ditto. Yeah. Every time I step into the booth, I try to bring my A game. Whether it's a character I've played for a number of years or a new character that I'll only play for a number of minutes, um, I, I try to bring what I can to each and every one. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Look at that jacket. Hello. The Superman. Hello. Oh, it's awesome. So cool. We approve. I appreciate that. Uh, first of all, Lauren, Jeremy, and Bryce, all of you guys are amazing. Thank you for everything that you all Thank do. You. Uh, I've also been doing acting for about eight years, and I've had a hard time figuring out how to make the crossover from uh, traditional acting to getting into the voice acting space as well. Uh, I am up in LA. I have a space where I'm building a voiceover booth. But I wanted to ask you all, what is your biggest piece of advice instead of just starting out, but transitioning from just acting to acting and voice acting and then also Bryce you mentioned chasing roles do you all find that sometimes when there's upcoming projects you want to be a part of do you all do the research and chase on your own or do you all have representatives that help you to do that I know it's kind of a loaded double question but. it's a little bit of both yeah. so I I got into being an actor because when I was six five six years old I wanted to be on Barney so I got into this industry to be on camera and as you know, when you want to make a living as an actor, you're like, I will do a, a commercial, audition, voiceover, uh, stage, play, whatever, whatever is paying that can pay my rent, I will do it. And it's also making those connections. Uh, like in Dallas, a lot of the Funimation, now Crunchyroll directors, do a lot of plays because that's just what's happening in Dallas. So there were a lot of actors that were like, I'm going to do Shakespeare in the Park. I know Caitlin Glass likes to do Shakespeare. It's making those connections so that that actor will go, I worked with them on a play. I think they might be great for this. So I think one thing that you could do, there's a lot of classes happening now, especially online with COVID. Um, Skills Hub, which uh, Jennifer Hale is a big uh, creator, and uh, I guess she works on that project. The Help Network um, and casting directors, actors, um, and other producers will often offer classes on that. It might be a quick workshop or it might be a six week class, but it's just getting to know them and getting them to see you in another way. Um, since you are a working actor, the other one that's going to be tricky, uh, and this is just like a behind the scenes sort of thing, is letting your agent know because your agent is like, hey, if they're making a lot of money on camera, I'm not going to send them for voiceover stuff because I don't want them to miss out on this work. And the same thing for voiceover. So if you're making a lot of money on video games and voiceover, they're not going to send you out for a 10, 15 line character on a TV show. So it's on you to keep reminding them and say, hey, please send me out for this. I am happy to do this. Remind them your agent works for you. And you got to keep telling them, hey, I've been taking these classes. I met with this person. Can you follow up? And it's a little bit of both if you see a project that you would like. Hey, I would love to audition for this. I met with this director. I did all this legwork on my own. Can you call the casting director and bridge that gap and, and have them finish, take you the rest of the way? Awesome. Right. That's Jeremy said. Yeah. Yes. 
Thanks, guys. We appreciate Thank you. Good you. luck. Yes, we've got time for one more question, and then we're going to have to oh go to the next one. So oh, I think my goodness. This right. is going to be the best way. Best question ever. What is your question? Uh, this question is for Bryce. Yes. <laughs> uh, when you were playing Cat Noir, did you like it? And were you excited to come back for the new Disney Plus series? Absolutely. So I have a really good time playing Cat Noir. Um, if you've ever watched the series in another language, you'll notice that all of the puns that are in the English version just aren't there. That's because I sneak them in the show. Um, so we, we have a really, really good time uh, recording, and it's been amazing to see the show flourish and continue um, and to go into another season. Um, it has been amazing, so good. The movie is coming. We've been working on it for two years. Wow. Um, and they just released another screenshot of it, and the animation looks incredible. Incredible. So I cannot wait to see it. Um, so yes, I love playing Cat Noir, and I'm very excited to continue. Um, if you guys, you, you're definitely on yeah. Miraculous. Yeah, and have tricks. You, have you joined the yes, Miraculous Yes, I play Stomp in Miraculous yeah. later. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Miraculous is so great. It's miraculous. <laughs> Okay, look, just, can I get a few laughs? Just a few laughs. Yeah, just yeah, thank, you. Thank, you. thank 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 we went through 30 minutes very fast. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> so, unfortunately, we are done oh, uh, for now. But, guys, just give Bryce and Jeremy and Lauren a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget, guys, we are immediately going back to our tables, which are yeah. all the way over there. And we are all pretty close together, so please come by yeah, yeah. and get something inside and say hi. Yeah. If you didn't get to ask your question, please come yes. up to yes. us. Yes, ask over there. Table. Can't wait to meet you guys. Yes. Thank you guys! Thank you guys so much. We'll do the next one very soon.